Hello, everybody. This is the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for November 13th, 2023. I'm Jeff Epler, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tidy computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. Uh, so if you want to support us, uh, consider purchasing your hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython Dev Text channel and the CircuitPython Voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes document, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. To receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonista's Discord role. There is a notes document that I just mentioned to accompany the meeting and recording. If you're watching this after the fact, that notes document includes timestamps to go with the video so you can skip around to the parts that interest you the most. This meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes, but it's highly variable depending on how much folks are participating. Uh, anyway, after each meeting, we put up the link with the next meetings notes doc so that anytime during the week you can add your notes and hug reports. Uh, if you wish to participate but can't attend or prefer not to speak, you can leave your hug reports and status updates in that document and I'll read them out during the meeting or rather whoever the host is that week will. All right, so the meeting structure next up is community news where I will uh, pick out a few choice items from the Python and microcontrollers newsletter that goes out every Monday thanks to our wonderful Anne engineer Anne B. Next up after that, we take a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's called The State of CircuitPython, The Libraries, and Blinka. The third part is Hug Reports. That's the first round robin, in which we invite anybody to highlight the good things that folks are doing in the community around us, uh, because we believe it's important to take the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part, and kind of the meat of the meeting, is Status Updates. It's an opportunity for each person to tell us what they've been up to, you can take a few minutes to talk about what you've done in the last week or since you last uh, checked in with us, as well as what you hope to do in the near future. If you come every week, then that would mean, you know, over the next week. And then the final part is called In the Weeds. If we have something that doesn't fit one of the other section that would benefit from a little community discussion live rather than on an issue or um, in just a text chat, this is the place for it. Um, and... Yeah, that covers how the meeting will go. So next, I will tell you about community news. Uh, there is so much stuff in every weekly newsletter, and I can just pick a few items. Uh, but the headline was an invitation to join the official Python Developers Survey 2023. The Python Software Foundation and JetBrains are conducting the seventh iteration of the official Python Developers Survey. The goal is to capture the current state of the language and the ecosystem around it. By comparing the results with last year's, they can identify and share with everyone the hottest trends in the Python community and key insights into it. The PSF encourages you to contribute to the community's knowledge by sharing your experience and perspective. Your participation is valued. After the survey is over, the PSF will publish the aggregated results and randomly choose 20 winners among those who complete the survey in its entirety, who will each receive a $100 Amazon gift card or local equivalent. And uh, CircuitPython is a perfectly valid kind of Python. So even if it's the only kind of Python that you work with, uh, you can fill out this survey. In fact, uh, we at Adafruit would love for you to do that. Next up, making music with CircuitPython and the Raspberry Pi Pico. This one is apparently from the Pensacola Maker Fair. Anyone looking to do synth music must take a look at the work done by Cooper, Cooper Dalrymple. Introducing the Pico Synth Sandbox, a new development board for CircuitPython Synth.io, which was featured this past weekend at the Pensacola Maker Fair. And there are some links there in the notes document, um, both to the creator's website, to YouTube, and GitHub. And uh, then I think this is an extract from one of those pages. It says, want to dive in and start programming your own digital synthesizer? The Pico Synth Sandbox might just be the route for you. Leverage the power of the RP2040 and the simplicity and versatility of CircuitPython and the Synthio library to get your ideas off the landing strip and into the sky. And then the last item that I picked out is another synthesizer-related item. This is from the Adafruit, 
Adafruit Playground by our very own C. Grover. And uh, it is a little document about using Eurorack control voltage signals from SynthIO. And I haven't actually read this page yet. I will be taking a look at it after the uh, meeting. So anyway, this is just a preview of the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter, also called the Python on Microcontrollers Newsletter. It is a community-run newsletter emailed every Monday. You can check out the complete archives on adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. And adafruitdaily.com is also the site to go to to uh, get an email subscription so it shows up automatically every week in your mailbox. It highlights the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. Uh, I mentioned it's community-run, so to contribute your own user project, you've got a number of ways to do it. You can edit next week's draft directly on GitHub and submit a pull request with the changes. You can also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on X, or you can email cpnews at adafruit.com with some uh, basic information. And we really do uh, welcome all your contributions. You are what create our newsletter. So thank you for that. And that wraps up the news section. So next up is the state of CircuitPython in the library and Blinka. So um, this is kind of a qualitative overview, excuse me, a quantitative overview because it's uh, centered around numbers, uh, mostly of activity on GitHub. Um, and this is reporting over the previous seven days um, because of, uh, you know, whatever reason, occasionally stuff is missed, but this gives us a good way to get an overview of what is going on. So we had 41, excuse me, overall in the whole project, we had 40 pull requests merged from 21 authors. Um, and let me look through this list very quickly. Uh, I don't recognize the name, whoops, of Fexivan, G. Grizel, Musco M, Jesse Jones, Look Forward, Sue Pick, Haugen Mitch, Andy Bing. So uh, a big thanks to those newer or less frequent contributors. Uh, as well, we had eight reviewers, uh, mostly from within uh, the Adafruit umbrella. So thank you to those reviewers. We use code review as a way to uh, keep the quality of the code that we incorporate in CircuitPython as high as we are able to. And so those that is a very valuable kind of contribution. Uh, as well, the uh, contributions from people who comment on issues and pull requests, although those aren't directly recognized within this report, that is also very helpful. And uh, Tim will be talking a little bit more about that further down when we talk about becoming a reviewer. Uh, next up, uh, Scott, are you able to tell us about the core? Sure, I'd love to. Thank you. Okay, stats for the core. Uh, we had 19 pull requests merged from 12 different authors. Uh, I won't go name the new folks just like Jeff just did. Uh, we had three reviewers as well, uh, Dan, Jeff, and myself. Uh, we have 21 open poll requests, so we're comfortably under that one page limit of 25. Um, we have 15 closed issues by four people and four opens by four people, so we're net down quite a few, which is awesome, uh, for a total of 664 open issues. Uh, we use milestones to track prioritization for Adafruit-funded folks, um, along with the releases that we plan on doing. Um, so we have one open issue on 10.0. We have eight open issues for 8.2x. So 10.0 is things we'll do in the future when we start uh, CircuitPython 10. 8.2x is uh, fixes to the latest stable release. And then we have 62 open issues for 9.0, which is the next major uh, feature stable release that we'll do. So lots to, lots of work to do there. Um, at the time that these stats were grabbed, we had one issue not assigned to milestone, so we have some triaging to do as well. And that's it for the core. All right. Um, next up, Tim, I hope you can uh, do the library section for us today. Yeah, definitely love to. Uh, so this section covers the CircuitPython libraries. Uh, those are all on GitHub under the name Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then uh, whatever the name of that specific library is. Uh, these are the Python layer of code that allows you to interact with various different bits of hardware uh, and provide helper functionalities to make it easier to uh, create CircuitPython projects. Across all of those libraries this week, we had 21 pull requests merged by 10 authors. 
uh, the uh, names that were newer or um, less uh, frequent or uh, just um, I, names that I didn't recognize were many of the same ones Jeff mentioned. I did want to also say uh, Timonsku. Uh, I don't recall seeing their name pop up for libraries before, so thanks to them as well as all the other uh, newer and less frequent contributors, as well as all of our uh, more usual suspects in contributing code. Um, for those uh, 10 authors uh, and their 21 pull requests, we had seven reviewers take a look at those. So thank you to all of our reviewers. Uh, that does look like the usual team there. So thanks to all of those folks for continuing to keep our reviews going. Um, the uh, Of the merged pull requests um, for this week, the oldest one was only 11 days old and the newest one was just one day. So we were on uh, to some newer uh, pull requests mostly this week. That leaves us with 57 uh, pull requests still open, the oldest of which is 452 days, and the newest is uh, just the one day. Um, over the past seven days, again, we had uh, 10 issues closed by three people and 10 new issues opened by eight people. Uh, and that leaves us with 679 open issues, of which there are 19 that are labeled good first issue. Uh, you can find all of those good first issues over on circuitpython.org slash contributing. On that page, it's going to list out all of the open uh, pull requests, and there are some tabs across the top that will let you click over to issues if you'd like. And uh, on the issues tab, there's a uh, drop-down filter that will let you select which tags you want to look at, and a good first issue, as well as a couple other tags are in there. And that is always uh, a great place to go if you want to get started with CircuitPython. If you don't have experience, but you want to get involved in contributing, um, head there and uh, also join us uh, here on the Discord as well. Um, for PyPy stats this week across all those libraries, there were 106,100 uh, downloads from PyPy across those 321 libraries. And the uh, top 10 list is listed here in the notes doc, if you'd like to take a look at that, uh, as well as the list of seven libraries that uh, had updates in the past week. Uh, and that's what we have got in library land this week. Thanks, Jeff. All right, I will just add one thing on top of that. Two of those libraries are new. There is a new library for the Qualia board, as well as for the ADS7830, which I'm guessing is some kind of sensor, but I'm actually not sure. Um, all right, but with that, um, Melissa, do you want to jump in and read us the block about Blinka? Yeah, so Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. This week we had zero pull requests merged. Um, there are currently three open pull requests amongst all the repositories. There were zero closed issues and zero opened issues, leaving a net of 77 open issues. Uh, there were 12,981 PyPI downloads in the last week. There were 8,960 PyWheels downloads in the last month. And we are at 125 boards. And that's it. Thank you. And next, we move on to Hug Reports. And I just need to find my blurb. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the list uh, in the order it is in the document to give everybody a chance to participate. If you're text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read the notes, read your notes when I get to them in the list. And uh, I've been away for a while, so all I have for y'all is a group hug. And next up is Dan. Okay, I have a bunch of things here. So thanks to Romkey and ADCC, who have been characterized, characterizing this problem we are seeing with macOS Sonoma, where there are delayed writes to the CircuitPy drive, which makes it not work properly. That's very helpful. Um, and thanks to ADCC for doing all kinds of file system work over the past few weeks, like uh, figuring out if it's possible to um, pretend that a FAT12 drive is FAT16, um, how to put six pounds of potatoes in a four pound sack that has increased the number of, increased the file space available on tiny 64 KB uh, CircuitPy drives uh, by uh, removing some of the space allocated for file system metadata. And then finally making CircuitPy uh, drives mountable on Android, which is a big improvement and that means people can uh, 
plug their boards into an Android tablet or phone and edit the files directly, which is great. The latter two things are already in uh, CircuitPython 9 Alpha 4. Uh, thanks to Look Forward for adding I2S mclock support on Espressive. That's very useful. And thanks to Retired Wizard, who's doing a lot of uh, alpha testing of the 9.0.0 release. Thanks to Jesse Jones and Supsic, who are new contributors to the French translation. Thanks to you, Jeff, for yesterday approving a PR build fix so I could get uh, 9.0.0 Alpha 4 out uh, yesterday. Um, thanks to Bill ADAT, who fixed, just fixed uh, ESP32 C6 Wi-Fi on 9.0.0 Alpha 4. And thanks to I'm Not James, who's doing a lot of work on async I.O., adding functionality to it. Okay. All right, next I've got notes to read from a couple of people. Uh, after that, we'll be on to Foamy Guy. But first, DJ Devon 3 has the following hug reports. Maker Melissa for the Qualia Library and all your contributions lately. Will be nice to see all the new displays wrapped up in a library. A hug to the Ruiz brothers for a beautiful little Christmas tree made of nudes and 3D printing. One for Dan H. and team for releasing CircuitPython 9.0 Alpha 4 this week. To Scott for all the work on dynamic memory and split heap voodoo. To Retired Wizard and Jacob Marble for helping track down heap and pie stack bugs. And finally, a group hug. And then from 88CC, we have a hug for Dan H. for working tirelessly with me on Discord, providing useful feedback and suggestions, and one for Anecdata for cooking up the test from my wifi.stopap pull request. All right, and now we come to Tim and then Katni. All right, thanks, Jeff. Uh, hug reports for me this week. Thank you to uh, Vladak, who added support for the web workflow to Circup, uh, which is really cool to see. I definitely have come to use Circup quite a bit, so it's nice to see that working uh, on those devices that don't have USB drives. Um, thanks to uh, Dan for keeping the new releases coming. Uh, thanks to Scott for a super helpful tip about uh, installing pip with the dash E uh, argument, as well as sharing some thoughts on the Circup changes I was working on during Deep Dive, and uh, group hug to everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Next up is Katni. All right, I have a hug report to Paul Cutler for a lovely chat and more ideas, to Melissa for a great chat, to ADCC for pointing me to a specific workaround for CircuitPython on macOS Sonoma and for jumping in to let me know that running a macOS VM in parallels won't help, uh, to Romkey for letting me know that an Ubuntu VM works in Sonoma with some caveats, uh, to Rose for spending the last few days elbow deep in JavaScript and Python working to make image handling in the Pelican uh, Python-powered site static site generator better and easier to do and a group hug for everyone thank you next up is liz hello uh so hug report to scott for working with me on the ads 7830 library which is a four uh sorry it's uh eight adc uh inputs on a uh a stem of breakout uh jepler welcome back from vacation uh, DJ Devin for documenting his large matrix panel project. The tiling diagram was very helpful for someone I was assisting on the team. And group hug. Okie doke. And next is Maker Melissa. I'm going to give a hug to you, Jeff, and welcome back. And I want to cat me for a great chat and group hug to everyone else. All right. And then we have Paul Cutler. Hi, Paul. Hi, Jeff. Um, I've got a hug report for ADCC and Dan for all their work troubleshooting the Mac OS Sonoma file system issue, and a group hug. All right, we're nearly at the end of hug reports. Uh, I have some for Retired Wizard, uh, one for R. Grizel for the LilyGo TDAC pull request. After I blew up my now unattainable keyboard featherwing, I had plans to get the LilyGo TDAC working with CircuitPython, but thanks to R. Grizel's work, I was able to just pick up and start Python coding for it as well as a group hug for all the Adafruit developers and community contributors. And now it is time for Scott to wrap up the section. Go ahead. Hey, Jeff. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, hug report to Foamy Guy for deep diving while my schedule remains uncertain. And I, it's fun. I got to catch some of it on Friday, so that was fun. Thanks, Thanks Tim. 
And that wraps it up for Hunger Reports. Now the next section is called Status Updates. It's your time to tell folks what you're up to. I will start and we'll go through the notes document in order. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. Uh, if there is a quick tip or trick that you want to offer, please feel free to do that. But if the discussion becomes uh, more of an exchange, then we'll move that to in the weeds. And with that, I will start off with my uh, quick update. I did a few small things while I was on my trip just here and there, but um, nothing really of note. But what I'll be doing this coming week is digging into some camera issues that have been raised. We have some in the issues tracker and some that uh, I've kind of been getting verbally. And so just going to work on those, followed by some other version 9 bugs if I manage to clear out the list of the camera backlog. And uh, yeah, I just missed y'all, so please have another group hug. Next up is Dan. Hello again. Okay, so... As mentioned, I released CircuitPython 900 Alpha 4 on Sunday. There was an Alpha 3 build, and it was fine. I mean, the the um, what was in it was fine, but uh, it failed to build the labeled um, binaries that as as Alpha 3, and that was due to some internal problem in the build system. So I fixed that, and that's we just we're just skipping Alpha 3. That's all. And uh, this release has the new split heap storage scheme, uh, which may need tuning to resolve storage issues with larger programs. But Scott, I think, has just this moment figured out uh, how to fix one of the major issues that we're seeing right now. I worked on some more uh, minor display I.O. refactoring changes, mostly just changing readme files and example files. And now I'm just plugging away at uh, the list of uh, 8.2.x and 900 bugs, of which there are five or six dozen. Okay. All right, now I have notes from DJ Devon 3. Submitted my ESP32 S3 Feather Weather with MQTT project to the playground. Documentation isn't as fun as building the projects. For a personal house project, I designed and 3D printed nine feet of white U channel for a side lit LED strip. The house builder, in their infinite wisdom, decided to only install a hallway light at the end of the hallway. It uses a PIR sensor to automatically activate the LED strip installed along the top edge of the baseboard. And in the notes doc, there is a photo of that. All right, and ADCC writes, Resolved the CircuitPython USB mass storage knot mounting on Android. Recovered about 25% of flash file system space for boards with tiny flash, for example, M0 Trinket. As part of my RP2 BLEIO work, updated the CYW43 driver to see if it resolved any open RP2 Wi-Fi issues. It didn't, but the work pointed me to a resolution for Wi-Fi.stopAP. And continued working on RP2 underscore BLEIO. It's got my full attention this week. Next up is Foamy Guy. Hello again. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so for the... Past week, most of my time went to the Learn Guide code repo, updating uh, all the projects to use the new Display.io APIs. And then uh, this morning, I went back through the actual Learn Guide pages, the ones that contained the same code, but in non-embedded form that needed to be updated inside uh, Learn system uh, over on that side. And I've done those this morning as well. So uh, I think all of the Display.io API updates uh, are behind us on uh, the learn guides, but I will do another check at some point because when I ran the original list, it was a couple of weeks back. I don't know if any new ones snuck in uh, since then. So I'll check in again, but the vast majority of those are taken care of, I think, at this point, which is nice. Um, the other stuff that I did get into was in Circup, uh, working on the proposal to add web workflow uh, into Circup. There was one bit that wasn't functional yet, which was the auto tag, which uh, allows Circup to install stuff based on the contents of your code pie. Uh, so I've been adding that functionality and working through the issues that pop up as I do. Uh, and then uh, for this week, the only thing I know for sure that's uh, planned so far is to do a bunch more testing of the USB uh, and web workflow in Circup. I've been working in web workflow with it for a lot, so I need to go back and make sure that I haven't broken anything, uh, which I am, imagine that I have, because I've already fixed a few other things. But 
And that's what I have got so far for this week. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, and next is Katni. Hello. So I've been blocked on releasing content due to image handling on my blog. It turns out the image situation uh, in the Pelican static site generator isn't that great. Uh, my wife's been working on writing a new plugin that makes it a lot more straightforward. Um, I was able to understand the Python side of it, but I know nothing about JavaScript, so a huge piece of figuring out that puzzle on my own is way outside my wheelhouse. Um, I have a series of posts written up that are waiting on images, and I'm hoping to start getting those out this week. My office currently looks like someone set off a glitter bomb full of parts. I finally decided to organize everything, and fortunately or unfortunately for me, that means gathering everything and sorting it. It also means deciding how I want to organize it. I already have the microcontrollers handled. Um, how I will handle the rest depends on how much of each thing I have. I ordered a bunch of component bins ahead of this project, so I'm not lacking in places to put things. But I am looking forward to stacks of labeled bins on my shelf and being able to see my floor again. I identify with you about how stuff just explodes everywhere. I think everybody in this world goes through that continuously in their lives. But anyway, uh, now it is Liz's turn. Hello, and I can confirm that I currently have no control of my desk. Uh, so I wrapped up the ADS7830 ADC library and made a PR to add it to the bundle. Uh, when I wrote my notes about an hour ago, a guide was in moderation, but since then it is now live. So check it out if you're interested about that breakout. Uh, I also updated the Metro ESP32 S3 guide to reflect the RevB hardware changes. Uh, and then over the weekend, I soldered up uh, some breakout boards for my patch bay project and happy to report they are working as expected. And I used three millimeter pink LEDs on them. Uh, so I'm currently waiting on the acrylic mounting panel to come in from Send Cut Send, and then I'll be able to start fully assembling it. Thank you. And I'm just, uh, yeah, everyone confirms that that uh, stuff goes everywhere and you got to be ruthless to stay on top of it. But anyway, Maker Melissa, you are up. Hello, let's see. Uh, so I was, I'm giving for the last two weeks because Discord went to me in last week because uh, of updates. Uh, so I wrote the PCA uh, 9554 driver. Uh, I wrote the CST8XX driver for Arduino, which was my first new Arduino library. I updated the Qualia guide with 2.1 inch round display uh, touch screen usage. Uh, I added the 4 inch round display to the guide. I finished writing the Adafruit Qualia library, which allows easy changing of displays and touch drivers just by changing the display ID, as well as ac um, accessing all the peripherals. Uh, I helped Aaron with writing code for our matrix portal project. I started looking into revamping the Pi Eyes bonnet stuff so that it will run better on modern Raspberry Pi hardware. And this week's going to be a short week for me because I'm taking some time off starting on the 16th. And uh, so I'm going to finish up helping Aaron and continue to update the Pi Eyes stuff. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be done before I take off. Uh, I'm going to try and update any new boards on circuitpython.org with the new releases over the weekend. And I need to write a script to list any hidden boards on circuitpython.org so I can easily see if new info has popped up for those boards since adding them. And for personal projects, I'm working on creating my first CircuitPython board to work with LEGO Mindstorm sensors and motors, but I'm still in the uh, prototyping and phase in learning KiCad better. And then uh, I'm repairing and upgrading an old Dell Inspiron 1545 laptop uh, to run better. And that's where I'm at. You sound busy. But all <laughs> right. <laughs> it's Next. fun projects, though. Good. Next is Paul Cutler. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I'm happy to share that after way too long of a break, the CircuitPython show is coming back. I'm recording two episodes this week and hope to have the first one out next Monday. Thanks. Very cool news. All right. I have notes from Retired Wizard. Spend a lot of time coding a command line history slash editor for the LilyGo TDEC PyDOS keyboard handler, as well as special character sequences for generating characters missing from the keyboard, like square brackets and an equal sign. Next, I plan to add all the same features to my touchscreen 
and BB20Q I squared C keyboard handlers. Need to put aside the fun coding projects and get back to compiling the silly full build equals zero PR for various port slash board configurations so it can be taken out of draft and considered for merging. And once again, it is uh, Scott who gets to round out the section. All right, thank you, Jeff. Um, I'm still off and on because my mom is still in the hospital. Um, so I'll be doing that. Uh, I try to do that a little bit every day along with working a little bit every day. Um, I've got the Metro S3 Rev B to test SD cards with. So I was just thinking I might bring that in case she's napping when I'm there. Uh, I said I'll likely look into the PyStack exhausted reports. Um, it was supposed to stay the same size with the split heap stuff, but I must have missed something and it turns out I did. Uh, <laughs> I found the issue and I just tested it right now. So it's fixed in a brand new poll that I just made, 8598. Uh, the problem was is that uh, we used to, pointer math is tricky. So if you have a UN32 yes, star and then you add a number to it, it's that number times the size of UN32 um, bytes that it ends up moving. Um, but with the with the split heap stuff, I made it UN eight star um so i was inadvertently making the pie stack a quarter of the size that it was set for uh whoopsies and the initial heap uh actually uh suffered from that as well so i just made a pr for that um which will be good and i fully expect that we'll see memory allocation errors due to the split heap stuff still um but this will get us a better this should get us past all the pie stack exhausted issues which will be good um, and then uh, just a heads up for deep dive, Tim is planning on doing the next two weeks for me still, since I, I don't know what my schedule is. So thanks to Tim for doing deep dive again. And that wraps up status updates. The last section is called In the Weeds. It's the time for long form discussion of issues that need a little bit of community back and forth. And there is one topic, it is mine. And I want to talk about what weeks we skip the meeting during the upcoming holiday season. So in the US, the very important holiday of Thanksgiving is coming up. I believe that is next Thursday and Friday. And uh, that doesn't fall on a Monday, but often people are taking off an extended period of time. So I just wanted to, to float the idea of skipping one or the other of those. And then in a second, I will talk about Christmas, uh, which is of course in December. Um, so let's see, any, anybody want to jump in with thoughts? I was just going to look who is scheduled to host. So like Scott is scheduled to host yeah. the Monday before Thanksgiving. Right. And then, um, let's see, Dan, the Monday after Thanksgiving. So do y'all want to have those meetings or do you want to skip one of them? What do you think? Um, I'll be back by, I'll be around on the, on the Monday that I would do it. But yeah, I'll be, I'll be around too, but my variability comes from my mom's situation. Did we, did we skip Thanksgiving in the past? I don't I actually know the answer to that. Um, I guess I can page back real quick to 2022. I don't feel um, like we have. I don't think we did. Yeah. All right. So we can plan to do around Thanksgiving uh, as per usual then, if that's good for everybody. Yeah. All right. Then uh, both Christmas and New Year's fall on Mondays. So I think that we will hold the last CircuitPython meeting of the year on December 18th and then return on, uh, that'll be January second a tuesday how's that sound to people that makes sense to me i don't think i'll be back uh in january yet though i think uh, i guess it's marked till the third so yeah I, I wouldn't be able to do the january one wait january 8th I could make that. So we would skip the 25th and the 1st. We would skip the 25th and the 1st, but we'd right. skip the whole the whole week of the 25th 
and we just moved right. the that first January meeting by one day to Tuesday. And that again is a day that Dan is scheduled to host. Ah. I, I, I should be around then. So I don't think I mean probably there'll be two weeks worth of news and maybe thin, but that's okay. But I agree that we could skip it. We could skip so all week in there. We did skip that the twenty fifth, bump the first to the second. Yeah. 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 All right. If we need to do some swapping around, that's fine. I, yeah, I don't think I can make, I don't think I'll be able to make the second, but yeah, that doesn't but we'll mean. we'll figure it. out how to swap you out of the eighth. Well, no, I think, I think we could just cancel me and give me a break. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, right now I'm on Christmas, so we could just cancel that one and then shift yours the next. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, we'll figure it out. Yeah. All break. right. Well, I'm happy that that was easy to settle. Um, so, yeah, that means that we will see everyone as per usual next Monday, the 20th, uh, at the usual day and time. And let me get my notes for what else I say to wrap up this meeting. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for November 13th, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting uh, will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast is available on major podcast services. It also invariably gets a link in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe, and also remember, we want your stories and projects for the newsletter. I already covered that the next meeting will be on the 20th at the usual time of 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. It will be on the Adafruit Discord. You can join at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. To get notices about each meeting, including changes to the time or day, just ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. And that is all I have. We hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everybody.